Hey, and welcome back to Harlequin FPV. My name's Kai McDonald. Tonight, and let's be fair, it is always night time that I make these videos because uh, work and children make playing with toys way, way, way completely impossible during the day. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, putting on the bench the Aomway TX001 uh, switchable VTX. This VTX is a 25200 um, 600 milliwatt VTX. Uh, that is directly powerable, uh, powerable off your your battery, um, up to 28 volts, or supposedly 6s. Um, I run mine on 4s. I'd be comfortable putting it on 6 on 5s. 6s, I think, could probably be asking, but hey, you never know. It could work. Um, I guess most important things. Um, this, I guess, is a competitor to your your Foxy switcher. Um, probably most directly. Uh, I've used the AMWay 200s on a number of my builds. I rate them as a as a transmitter. They're a little bit big and a little bit heavy um, compared to something like a Unify or, a, or an Immersion Tramp, um, but they seem incredibly solid. Their performance is excellent on par with anything else I've ever used. So this is my first opportunity to have a play with their, their new switcher. Size-wise, they are a little bit bigger than the 200. They are 28 millimeters that way, 25 millimeters across, and the uh, the pigtail is 65 millimeters long. Also, the other key thing is what does she weigh? So let's just zoom out so that you can actually see the scales. Thirteen. 13 grams. Um, so it's not the lightest um, BTX in the world, um, but I don't think they're really competing in that particular market. Um, they have a very sizable um, heatsink, as you can see on the back, which, um, so I've been flying this one in a, in a Bolt Black Ops frame, um, which I guess for people who aren't familiar with them is, I call it like an alien class it's one of the larger proximity um very solid frames and this sits in very comfortably on that and i've not found it to get um hot at all performance wise on this has been very good uh one of the things that i'm going to be doing is um a side by side range performance comparison against a uh, a tbs unify um i hope that the tbs unify beats this one um because these are about half the price all right on to this side and looking at all of our pretty uh pretty buttons and lights and things like that uh we for focus there a bit dodged to be honest come on focus for me no focus all right so um we've two buttons here this first one here is um uh, adjust it switches between your power it also has the neat feature that if you double tap that um it will go into a no transmit mode which means hopefully if you're sitting in a um in a pits you're not knocking other other quads out of the sky this one here cycles through your bands and your channels um the other one that is nice is this uh vtx does have a built-in um microphone so if you decide you, you have audio output, um, you can either supply it um, with audio if you've got a microphone in your camera, or there is actually a microphone on this board, which will then be um, transmitted out. So I it's my cameras never seem to have uh, um, microphones. I never put a microphone anywhere else. So I actually like that feature for me able to hear kind of the motors and the prop noise and, and things like that. All right, so let's power it up and see all the pretty lights. Um, general rule of thumb as well, never power a VTX without your antenna attached. Um, it's a really quick way of destroying them. I'm just gonna power this on 3S for the, for the sake of this, but uh, it works perfectly fine. So you can see the, um, let's see if we can zoom in and have some focus. Come on this time, focus for me. This doesn't want to focus. All right, fine. Okay, 
Across the top here, the blue LEDs, they're all clearly marked A, B, C, D, and E with the blue LED um, indicating which band it's on. And then you've got the green at the bottom, one through two to seven there being your channel. Um, short click on the bottom, we'll move it across. Long press, we'll cycle your band. Very, very straightforward. Um, you know, there's no push and hold for three seconds, then count your flashing LED um, games like you get on the, on, on the TBS or the Tramp. Um, you'll notice there is a red LED. It's actually a little bit hard to see because it's not bright at all. If I double click this one though, oops, if I can manage it. Notice how that's now gone bright. That's gone transmit mode. Single LED like that means we're broadcasting at 25 milliwatt. Long press. And you move across to the next. Two like that is um, 200. Long press again. And we move across to 600. So as it stands at the moment, we have the bright light on TX. Um, means we're transmitting. If you again double click, that is now barely illuminated. Means we're now in the no transmit mode. So if you need to power your quad or anything like that, you can do that. Now, um, it remembers the settings that it is on. So if I power this down, like so, and then bring it back. It has remembered what settings, including the fact that it was not in transmit mode. If I was to power it down while in transmit mode, turn it back on in transmit mode, it will start up again in transmit mode. Um, I have heard uh, of some people who've had some issues with this losing the channels that it was on, um, but I personally haven't had that happen. Um, I've probably got about half a dozen batteries on this particular transmitter at the moment. Um, performance wise for what I've put it through has been my, exactly what I've been expected. I tend to fly on the, the 200 unless there's a reason why I need the extra range, um, which for most of the flying I do, I don't. Um, 25 just doesn't seem to be enough for um, going behind trees as often as I like to. All right, so I'm gonna shut that one down. There is only one little gotcha with regards to this VTX. And that is, Aomoe has decided on this particular VTX to be completely random with its channel allocation or channel number allocations. This here is your sheet, which your, your, your destructions, giving you your channels. Now, I fly consistently on A7, which according to this is 5925. Um, it just isn't actually the case for any other transmitter. It's 5745, which according to this is C2. Um, I have no idea why Aonway has done this because Aonway's 200 milliwatt transmitter holds to the standard everybody else is using them frequency chart. So this, while, while I would recommend that people should know what um, what frequency they are on by number, um, with this board, you you may actually need to carry your uh, your your destructions with you to be able to to know. Okay, well you need to be on five eight eight five. That is not going to be where you would expect it to be on any other um, transmitter. Putting that aside though, um, it seems to be a very solid, very well performing transmitter. Um, I like the option of a pigtail like you've got on this one here. Um, it seems to be soldered well. Um, the build quality is good. Um, performance wise has been, has been solid so far. Um, you, there is an option if you prefer of having the SEMA directly soldered to the, to the VTX if that's what you'd prefer, but I like the, um, I like the having the the pigtail like that. It's easy to repair if you break it. And to be honest, I actually think it protects the VTX that much more as well. Really are struggling for focus today for some reason. I'm sorry. Um, I do also like the way the plugs are done. Um, they they retain well and they're nice and easy to use. And it's not comp it's not too tight. So if you're looking at a cheaper VTX where the size and the weight isn't a huge issue to you. Um, I'd be having a look at these as a definite a definite contender. Um, they've performed well for me so far. 
Thank you very much, guys. It's time for me to sign off. I'm going to go out now and see which quad I'm going to break. Bye.